Hello everyone. Today we shall discuss about one of the topics from strategic management that is corporate level strategies. We all know that there are three levels in an organization. The three levels of an organization are divided on the basis of who are there in which level. In the topmost, we have the corporate level. The middle management is the business level. And in the lower level is the functional level. These are the three levels of an organization. So what are corporate level strategies? To understand this, we first understand what is corporate level. Corporate level is the topmost level of an organization chart. Here, the big heads of the company, such as CEO, CFO, board of directors, all are comprised in this level. So whatever strategies they make, that will be considered as corporate level strategies. Then what are strategies? Strategies can be anything like, in simple words, they are just plans that we make, that is the organization makes to achieve their goals, their objectives, and also to sustain in a long run. So basically, we have understood the meaning of corporate level strategies. These are the strategies that are taken by the people in the corporate level of an organization, that is the topmost level of an organization. Next, we can see the corporate level strategies can have four types. In. The first is the stability strategy. Next is the growth strategy. Then comes the retrenchment strategy. Combination strategy is not a something different type of strategy. Combination strategy is the combination of all the other three strategies. First strategy of the corporate level strategy is the stability strategy. Let's understand this in a very simple term. What do you mean by stability? Staying in the same level, not going up, nor coming down. That is being constant or being stable, not with many of the fluctuations, no changes. So stability strategy is also a strategy where the business wants to maintain a stable position that it does not desire to move upwards to have better opportunities, better growth, nothing like that. Nor does it want to fall downwards. That is, it wants to stay in the same position. Some of the characteristic features of stability strategy are same business. Stability strategy, as I've already mentioned, is staying in the same line. You don't want to change your business. You don't want to go to a new business. You don't want to change your product lines. You don't want to change anything, basically. That is, you have the same business, same products, same line, same customs, and everything is almost the same. Next feature is that it enhances function, functional efficiencies. When uh, a firm wants to be stable in its, uh, in its objectives, in its products, in its business, then it needs to be very efficient. Because if they lose their efficiencies, then they're likely to go down. Same applies in our everyday life. If we, or if any students, they want to continue their good marks, especially if a student is a top scorer and he wants to stay in the same position, then he has to be very efficient in his working. If there is a slight lack of efficiency, then the position will start deteriorating. Similarly, if a business wants to stay stable, that is in the same position, then they have to be very efficient as well as effective. Difference between effectiveness and efficiency is very well known. Effectiveness is giving you 100%, that is, it is focused on the result. Whereas efficiency is effectiveness with the time factor being considered. Next important characteristic feature of stability strategy is status quo. That is, they want to maintain the status level. They want to be in the same status. And one more basic characteristic feature is that there is less risks involved in it. Because you don't want to grow to the higher opportunities. You don't want to go up in the scale of ladder. So you basically want to stay in the same level. So you don't have much of risk that is faced when you want to go up and up. If you go for reasons, why do companies or you opt for stability strategy? That is when and all do they want to be stable in their strategic decisions? The first reason is maturity stage. When they have a product that is in the maturity stage, that is, it is not just introduced in the market. That is, it's not a baby no more. It has grown up and it's almost mature. That is, you cannot make some more innovations to the product so that more customers will be attracted. Nor can you do anything with the product or you cannot bring something new in it. You cannot have innovations in it. It's already in the maturity stage. Like, let it stay for some time. We don't want to remove it from the uh, market, nor do we want to make it better and reach a wider class. We just want it to stay same. Like, let it stay for how much ever time it wants to stay. Such uh, when the product is at this maturity stage, then they want to keep it stable. They don't want to fall in their sales and nor do they want to grow up in their sales because there's no opportunity to grow up. The second reason why companies prefer stability strategy in some of the situations is when the environment around them is stable. It's really a very uh, rare situation that environment is stable because especially in this era where technology is booming like anything, the environment is not at all stable. It could be in any terms, that is in the political terms or economic terms or even in the uh, competition terms, the environment is 
constantly changing, but there might be a situation or at least even for a small span that the environment is stable. The environment does not demand any change to happen. The environment does not want you to grow. So in such a situation, it better it is better to stay quiet, calm and just accept the situation. And if, uh, instead of growing or taking more risk, just stay in the same place. That is at least will not lose the customer's interest. The third major reason for stability strategy is consolidation. That is, a business wants to consolidate itself. It does not want to grow. It does not want to take much of risk. It does not have any plans for innovation. That is when it decides to use stability strategy. The next major reason is comfortable. Stability strategy is usually comfortable compared to other strategies. That is the growth strategy. You feel comfortable when you want to stay in the same level. You do not have to take any risk, no risk, no gain. So you are not much bothered about what to do next, what to do next, how can we improve. You, you're not in that rat race, basically. That is, once you've got something, you don't want again something else. You're happy with what you are. You're comfortable, you're calm. And this is when stability strategy is usually implemented. Next, growth strategy or the expansion strategy. The second one in the corporate level strategy is growth strategy, which is also called as expansion strategy. Just as the name suggests, the business wants to grow. It wants to expand. It wants to enlarge itself. That is, you, want, you don't want to stay in the same level. You want something better. Just as we know what is going in a rat race. That is, you're not satisfied with what you want. Once you've got it, you want something else. Once you've achieved that, you want something else. So it wants to grow, expand, become bigger, have more profits, have more uh, returns. And it just wants to be the top position. Some of the characteristic features of growth or expansion strategy is redefinition of business. In the previous, that is in the stability strategy, we saw that it is the same business, same product line. But here in the expansion strategy, it is not the same. You can include a new product, you can expand to a new market, grow to a better size. So that is basically, you do want the same business. You're redefining it, giving some more innovations, giving something better meant to the present business so that you have a better business, better product line, and you want to grow, expand, and become large. Second thing is versatile strategy. Growth does not stop at once. You keep on growing till you achieve mostly the sky is the limit. Or now I cannot even say that the sky is the limit because we are going into even expanding the galaxies and we are going away into the universe. So especially basic, uh, basic fundamental concept of growth strategy is that it is a versatile strategy. You can't stay the same. You have to keep adapting to the environment. You have to keep changing, modifying, learn, relearn, unlearn, and all such procedures will be keep on repeating. So it is very versatile and not a static or a constant thing. Next is that fresh investments. When you want something bigger, when you want to grow, of course, the basic funda is the four M's you would require. Money, men, material, and machinery. You The basic thing is money. Money is the lifeline of growth. You need fresh investments. You need fresh ideas, fresh people to involve, fresh mindset, fresh type of uh, environment inside so that it will facilitate your aim to grow and expand the business. Just as uh, compar comparatively, growth strategy is basically the completely opposite strategy of stability strategy. In stability, you want to stay in the same level, whereas in growth, you want to move higher and higher and higher. So in stability strategy, there were comparatively less risk, but here there is high risk. Just as it is said, no gain, uh, no risk, no gain, no pain, no gain. The more risk you take, the better would be the rewards when you be successful. So growth strategy, when you're aiming for a high reward, then you have to be ready to take higher risk and move ahead. These were some of the characteristic features of growth strategy. Then let's learn what are the reasons that is when and when will a company want to adopt growth or expansion strategy. First is the scale of operations. When they already have a good scale of operation and they want to expand to have better scale of operation, to have more suppliers, more customers, more raw materials, more products, that is a situation you're ready to face, you're ready to take that risk and expand so that you get the better fruits also. You can enjoy the economies of scale. That is when companies would like to pursue growth strategy. Next is the demand of environment. Just as I've already said, environment is never stable. It keeps on changing, keeps on fluctuating. Many new things come up and within a swift of a second, the, old, the thing is already obsolete. So the demand of the environment is that you have to constantly keep changing and even growing at the same time. Because if you're stagnated at one place, then some other business will come, take you, push you down. The business level is just like crabs. They don't want you to go up. The moment you're growing up, they'll pull you down. So they devour. So you have to try with all your might and again, move up. You have, you have to come up out of the box and think something extraordinary so that you can expand, grow and have better rewards for yourself. When the environment also wants you to grow, then why not growing? Next is when you have a control over the environment. 
that is uh, some of the factors that affect the environment is political factors economic factors competition and there are many more when you have a control over it that is when you're already a big boss in the market then you have a control over many factors that is you can control the price major up to a major level at least you can have a control over how others are responding when you have a lot of funds with you you can have better research, research and development activities that when you have a control of the situation you can of course take advantage of that situation you would not like to exploit the situation and move higher in the corporate ladder also when the situation is under your control you would like to step ahead 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 and reach the pinnacle next is for this satisfaction when you are not satisfied with what you already have you want something better you want something more you are you are not happy with what you want in stability strategy you were comfortable you were happy with what you already have but in growth strategy the companies are not at all happy with what they have they are thriving for more they already have that energy within them also when the resources are also facilitating your strategy then it is the best time for the company to expand and grow ahead next we can see that there are many types of growth strategy basically growth strategy can be divided into two that is internal and external just as the name suggests internal is when the growth is within the organization and external is when the growth is external to the organization within the internal uh, growth strategy also you can have two basic types that is intensification and diversification under intensification the first one is market penetration market penetration basically happens when you have an existing product and you want to introduce it in an existing market that is both the product and the market are already existing if i have to take a dummy example then just imagine about the soap industry the soap industry is not something new it is already existing and you have already uh, soap is a product also that is already existing you are not coming up with something new that a soap can uh, do something wonders that would be a new product no you are already you are having an existing product and that one existing market soap industry is already existing so at that time you would like to go for market penetration that is you want to enter into a market that is already existing but an existing product this needs a lot of courage it involves a lot of risk because there would be already many competitors established in this in my dummy example if you take the soap industry we have n number of soap brands products that are already flooding the market so when you are entering such a type of industry you should have a good strategy in the mind so that you can crack up the competition and excel the second one in the intensification is market development this will happen when you have an existing product but the market is comparatively new you are going into a new market with an existing product i can't think of an example because this is something that business would always want to achieve and i'm not a businessman and i i cannot get some innovative ideas at the present moment market development happens when you are developing a new market for your product you already have some product but you want something new you are making a new niche of market you are exploiting that you are going and pinpointing that one particular pain point of the consumer and you are taking and taking the pain away from them with your existing product this will happen when you are going for the market development here you are growing and expanding in the term of a new market area that has not that has not been exploited by anyone else so you will be the first move taker here the next in the growth strategy is a product development strategy just uh, development is a new word product just as we saw in the market development market is new but the product is existing the product development is just the other way around the product is new but the market is existing for example uh, mobile market is and mobile industry is an existing market but if you are coming with something new in the mobile technology then that would be product development here the innovative ideas and the uh, risk taking is a major factor because you don't know whether the market will completely accept your product there are a lot of risk so you're growing by adding a completely new set of product to your existing list you already have some two three four products you are adding one more new product and want to introduce it into an existing market or existing field or existing area so these were the three types in intensification market penetration that is when you have existing product existing market market development when existing product new market and product development when existing market and a new product the second type under internal growth strategy is diversification diversification basically means going out you are not sticking to the basic box and you are coming out of it so here we can see there are basically four types under this the first one being the vertical integration just for example uh, so what the supply chain is there initially you have the suppliers for the raw materials then you have your own company for example then you have the uh, distributors let's think these are three levels 
if this is your company and you try to integrate either backward or forward, then this is termed as vertical integration. Vertical is up to down or down to up. That is a straight line. You're integrating. That is, you're bringing together. You're coming together. You're moving closer in the vertical format. That is vertical integration. For example, if uh, I am, if I own a business of making wheat flour, then the suppliers for my raw material would be wheat farmers and the distributors would be wholesalers and retailers who would uh, make my wheat flour reach the customers. Now, if I go and integrate with one of these, that if I, if I join them and if I become together, then this would be called as vertical integration. In vertical integration, there are basically two types. One is forward integration and another one is backward integration. Forward integration happens we are moving forward into the supply chain. That is, you are the business and you move forward to the next person. That is the person who is in the next level of your chain. In my wheat floor example, I am the wheat floor manufacturer. I go and integrate with the distributors, with the wholesalers, with the retailers, and we uh, come together. This integration is called as forward integration. The second type of vertical integration is backward integration. This is just the other way around. I'm going integrating with the person who is behind me in the supply, in the chain. That is, if I'm going and integrating with the farmers of wheat, then I'm doing the backward integration. Forward and backward. Second type of diversification is horizontal integration. Vertical integration was top to bottom or bottom to top, but horizontal integration is in the same level. If there are two to three firms in the same level and they come together, that is, they integrate with one themselves, then this is an example of horizontal integration. That is when they are in the same level, not up and down. It is in the same level and they're integrating themselves. That is horizontal integration. The third type of diversification is concentric diversification. This happens when you, you are going to integrate with a firm that is a different product, but there is some link between the products. That is, you're not going to some completely new industry. There. You're just going to integrate with someone who has some sort of link with your product, with your business, with your industry, with your market. That will come under concentric integration. The last one is the conglomerate. India, conglomerate type of diversification. This will happen when two completely different product firms integrate themselves. That is, they come together. That is, they grow and expand together. One is related to one type of product, one product line, and the other is a completely different product line. When they both come together, then that is a conglomerate. These were the types of internal growth strategy. Next, we see what would be the external growth strategy. In external growth strategy, basically, we have just two types. The first one being the mergers and acquisitions. There's a slight key difference between merger and acquisition. Let's take an example, a dummy example. Merger is when uh, there is a company A and also one more company B. When they both come together, that is A as well as B, they come together, that is they merge, they join hands and they form one more company, that is, let's say, name it as AB. Then this is called as mergers. That is two separate industry, two separate products or two separate companies. Uh, sorry, not products, two separate companies, they come together, they merge, they become one, they consolidate themselves and they might form a new company as well. That is, in our example, AB company, then that is called as merger. Then what is acquisition? Let us again take the same example. That is, we have two, pro uh, two companies, A and B. Now, if A is a dominant company and B is somewhat a weaker company, then let's imagine that A would like to take over B. That is, you have A, the dominant company, taking over of B, the weaker company. This case, it will be called as an acquisition. That is, A is acquiring the business of B. This usually happens in the case of recessions or when there is low profit margin or when one competitor, competitor is extremely good, extremely high performing and others are not good enough. Then it usually happens in a forceful way where the weaker company is forced to sell itself to the uh, uh, stronger company. So now B company is no more in existence and only A is dominant and it is only existing. This is A acquiring B. That is, you don't have two separate things. One will just take over another. This is acquisition. Under mergers and acquisition, you can have again four types. And these are basically a kind of repetition of what we have already learned. That is 
अगेन वर्टिकल मर्जर हॉरिजॉन्टल मर्जर को जेनेरिक मर्जर एंड कॉन्ग्लोमेरेट मर्जर यू नीड नॉट अगेन लर्न समथिंग डिफरेंट बिकॉज वर्टिकल इंटीग्रेशन वी ऑलरेडी सेम फॉलोस इन वर्टिकल मर्जर वे companies in the above and the below rank they merge together and they form a new company that is vertical merger horizontal merger is when two companies in the same line they join together and form a new uh, merger company the famous example for horizontal merger is lipton and brook bond when they joined together that was a horizontal merger then the third type under uh, internal growth strategy we had concentric under merges we have co generic but the definition remains more or less the same that is when you are going to merge with another company that has a different line of product but still there is some link there is some relationship there is some common factor between those two that you can merge and have a new company then that will be called as co generic merger for example if i have a cloth manufacturing company and i would like to merge with another uh, let's say for example shoe manufacturing company there is some common things between clothes and shoe that is what is called as co generic merger next we have conglomerate mergers this is again the same thing as we had in diversification conglomerate is when two separate companies that one is in the north and one in the south i literally didn't mean north and south direction i just gave uh, an example like one is completely different from the another and they both merge into one company then that will be called as conglomerate merger uh, just to take a random example if uh, mine is a refrigerator manufacturing company and i would like to merge say with cotton industry cotton the producing company then there is no link between refrigerator and cotton or if minus a food company that is i basically manufacture some eatable items snacks items and i would like to merge with something like a furniture manufacturing company then there is no link at all between the two things that is one is completely different from the other such type of mergers are called as conglomerate mergers this then basically there might be one question that pops up in our mind like in vertical horizontal or co generic at least has some common things so you require someone from the same business same line and you would like to group but what is there in conglomerate you are doing completely different this basically happens when you want to access a completely new area and you want to uh, exploit that area this will be easier to go for that next second type of external growth strategy is strategic alliance strategic alliance is forming a relationship between two or more entities that is when you have one idea and you want to achieve something within that idea which would not be you will not be able to achieve when you are doing alone that is for example one person has one goal one company has one goal and the other company has another goal they want to achieve their goals but they are not able to achieve it individually so they come together for some specific purpose or for some specific time so that they can achieve their goals that is called as strategic alliance there are four major advantages of strategic alliance which i usually remember in the form of p o s e by taking the first letter of each one p stands for political this is just a tip to remember these points that is p is political you will get political advantages you will get to go to some countries where you couldn't uh, actually go because of the political restrictions so that you will have a strategic alliance with a company existing in that country next is organizational advantages you will get to know about their organization their strategies and you can also implement them adopt them and you can grow better next is a strategic advantage you will get to know their strategies their plans how they are exceeding in their areas you can also join hands and uh, actually achieve the purpose very easily and the fourth advantage is economic advantage when two people are, have become friends then they will of course share their resources and for the betterment of all the individuals they would of course want to have some better things that is they would share their economic uh, advantages also one of the major disadvantage of strategic alliance is the risk of sharing when you have people together then you are likely to share your experiences your tricks your ideas and your plans with the other person that finally may not uh, sometimes if there is any clashes then the security purpose and your privacy is not in your hands the other person might leak your information give it out to your competitors such a uh, disadvantageous position might also arise next we'll go to retrenchment strategy Retr just we saw growth strategy stability strategy what is remaining retrenchment strategy when you want to come down that is when you feel the present product line or the profit is not at all enough you just want to shut your business or shut that product line or you just want to come out of the market such a strategy is called as retrenchment strategy let's see some of the characteristic features of retrenchment strategy first is the attempt to find out the problems and solutions you want to find out what is the problem with your product with the market or your strategy and you also want to find out what are the solutions to solve all these problems this was basically done in retrenchment strategy that is you are analyzing you are doing a spot analysis you are thinking where you are lacking and how you can improve in that next characteristic feature is 
it is followed when an organization reduces the scope of its activities when you do not have uh, enough funds so that you can uh, fund your uh, top aim activities then you would of course like to reduce your funding or reduce the time you have given to such things that is you want to reduce the scope of activities scope of expansion then you would follow a retrenchment strategy some of the reasons for following retrenchment strategy are first is a better alternative you might have something better alternative like I want to produce pen, but I think this pen industry is already flooded with a lot of competitors. So I'll think of some better alternative. Maybe I'm already producing a pen, but I don't want to continue with that because of there's a better alternative, especially in the technology field. So I would like to go for manufacturing stylus. Because of this better alternative, I will shut down my present ideas. Next is a mismatch in acquiring. You have acquired a firm or you acquired a product line, but it does not match your strategy. It does not match your strengths. It does not match your objectives. Then why to hold on the extra burden? Just throw it off. Next reason is the competition. When a particular industry, as I've already told, is highly competitive, there are already people in the cutthroat competition. You cannot survive. Then why to stay in that industry? You can go for some better opportunities where you can exploit them and have better uh, results also. Next is the cash flows. When there are particularly low cash flows, you are not able to succeed in that industry at all. Better to quit it than to just drag on and drag on and just waste your resources. Basically, there are three types of retrenchment strategy. First is a turnaround strategy. Second is a divestment strategy. And finally, it is a liquidation strategy. Turnaround strategy is when you want to analyze what are the problems in your current strategy, current product line, current market, and you want to find out the solutions for this also. This is basically done when you have persistent negative cash flows, when the product market is also growing down, when there are too many people, there is mismanagement, everything is basically going wrong. So what is the process for turnaround strategy? First, you would like to analyze the current situation. That is, what is there in the industry right now? What is wrong with you? Why are you not able to move ahead? So you would basically analyze the situation. Then you would check out the problems and also find solutions for your problems. You would like to move ahead. Why am I not getting this answer? We basically do this, especially in practical problems. When there is some problem, we first analyze what is the problem about. Then we try to find out the solutions. Next, we'll have some emergency plans. That is just like a first aid kit. Presently, what you want to do? Something to come out of the situation. That is, it may be drastically you want to change everything and move away. So you will develop an emergency plan and you will execute it also. Then the fourth step is restructuring the business. That is, you redesign the way you are being run. If there is problem in the strategy, you change your strategy. If there is problem in the way the product is being manufactured, you change your manufacturing process. If there is problem in the employees working, you'll change them. So you'll have a completely redesign and something new coming up. And finally, you'll return back to normal. That is when all your plans are worked out and you're, it, you're successful. You, have no, you don't want to close your business here. You just want to find out the wrong, find the solution, and you're back to the normal state. Second type of retrenchment strategy is divestment strategy. This will basically happen when you want to quit an industry itself because it's, uh, it's completely a waste to have products in this industry or to manufacture in this industry. You just Investment is when you're putting money into the industry or when you're putting money into the product. Divestment is completely opposite. You're removing the money. You're moving out of that industry. You don't want to uh, give more funds to a particular industry or you don't want to continue in that industry. This will happen in divestment strategy. Next is a liquidation strategy. This is just like uh, you just want to close the business. No more at all. This is done. Uh, it could be because you don't have any more uh, opportunities to grow. You're already facing a lot of losses. There is no upgradation possible. Technology is developing very fast or the competitors are very high that you cannot think of what to do again. So you just want to liquidate the business and just end it for once. So these were the types of retrenchment strategy. Next, the final type of corporate level strategy is a combination strategy. Combination strategy is not something new. You cannot uh, define it in a different way. Combination strategy, just as you can see in this picture, we have stability strategy, which we learned first. We have growth strategy, which we learned later, and also the types on it. Then we have the retrenchment strategy. When all these three things are combined, they're brought together, they're pulled up, then that strategy is called the combination strategy. Usually, every business follow combination strategy. That is, they want to stabilize in some uh, activities, they want to stabilize in some characters of products, they want to grow in some product lines, and they want to retrenchment. That is, they want to come out of some of the industries. So this is basically a mixture of all the things. And why do they do? Because the business are very huge. They are, the environment is also very huge, diverse, complicated. So you would like to have a mixture and miss, uh, you want to take the advantages of all the things put together because basically many large businesses have uh, various product lines. So for one product line, they would have one strategy and for the other product line, they would obviously have another product strategy. 
here we come uh, come to the end of this topic. So before just taking a leave from here, let us quickly summarize whatever we have learned. We have learned that corporate level strategies are adopted by the corporate level of management. That is the top level of management. There are basically four types of corporate strategy, stability strategy, growth strategy with many different types in it, the retrenchment strategy, and there are three types again in it. And finally, the combination strategy, which is a mixture of all the above strategies. Based on many parameters, the organization adopts the strategy or a combination of them. That is a combination strategy. 